you're impressed with your tanner than I am. Okay, I think we're live, kids. Uh, let me start pressing some buttons, and yes, we are recording. We're recording. We're live. Hello, everybody, and welcome, 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 welcome to the When Calls Art After Show. Brian Bird special we do every year. I'm James Live Jr. This is my online network, JLJ Media. That's right, my network. And I want to thank you so much for joining us and always coming to our rescue here as Hardys and checking out our Hardy content. You have been doing that. I know it's been a strange season because we haven't done an after show, but I did some reaction videos. We've done some interviews together. Um, do show up. The Hardys show up every single time. So I we appreciate that so much. Mr. Serafini is here. You know, like she's live. Mr. Serafini live. Uh, is. Hi, Hardys. James, hello. Hi, Hardys. It feels like it's been a while. It's been a minute. <laughs> For sure, because, you know, yes. unfortunately, we haven't, I couldn't really commit to the season, uh, you know, life, <laughs> COVID, I, I blame COVID and everything in my schedule is completely different than it was a year ago <laughs> than the last season, but I'm, I'm glad to still be here with all of you. Yes, she is still here, and they always ask what you're wearing, so they always support us, and that's why I oh, thank Oh, do they? Oh, thank you. Yeah, they do. We're hearties for life, we said, so that's it. <laughs> uh, and he's here, our brother from another mother, the Papa Hardy of them all, Brian Bird. Hello. Hi guys, hey, so, so nice to be with you. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a family tradition, an annual tradition that we get together after the final episode. And I hope we're doing this for many years to come. It would be very cool. Yes, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Now, as we were coming in, as we were coming in, I do want to do, I just want to say something really quick. Um, my heart goes out to the families of the victims of the mass shooting in Rob Elementary School in Texas. Right now, it's up to 21 people, uh, including 18, 19 children. Um, and I'm, we may have Hardys out there who may be affected by this directly. And, you know, we're a Hardy family, so we give it out to the Hardys, to our non-Hardy family, to everybody out there. This is a, a tragedy that no matter what side you fall on politically or wherever you are, we can all agree this is a tragedy and something needs to happen. Yeah. I don't know what it is, yeah. but something needs to happen. Uh, this is becoming a little too common place uh these days but to yep. the parents everybody i'm just i i'm heartbroken heartbroken so i'll make sure i want to say that good good call there good good yeah. point um, yeah, we so need more, we're all about we're all more, about community right brian more hope valley in the in the world we need more hope valley i agree i totally agree and more, hope valley, more, more, more kindness more kindness yes more kindness um they're here people are here okay we got a lot of people here okay so let's just say first, congratulations on season nine. It was it a was successful season. Uh, it happened. It went by so fast, <laughs> uh, seemingly. Um, overall, Brian, just overall, how are you feeling now that season nine has aired? Well, thank you, James and Marissa, for again, for having me be with you here. It's, it's always a pleasure. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be with the Hardys uh, anytime I can. And uh, my my hat, uh, I don't have a hat, but my hat would be off if I wore a hat um, to our fine cast and crew, all our writers, John Tinker. I mean, I, they just did an amazing job this season. I am, you know, I have been around for so long that I'm now sort of grandpa to the show. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a very proud grandfather of One Calls the Heart and Hope Valley and all these amazing characters. And um, it feels amazing uh, that we made it through season nine and uh, that we're still here. Hope Valley is still here and, and the values of this show are still alive and well and um you know season eight was sort of a roller coaster ride as you remember and and a lot of the hardies remember there was a lot of deep deep passion and feelings about what happened and i think that those feelings were rewarded no matter what you know camp people ended up on uh last last season I think their, their feelings, if they came back, were de greatly and deeply rewarded by, by the storytelling this year and some of the, um, the new wrinkles that were added and some of the old wrinkles that got re revisited, which uh, I loved so much. Um, you know, 
it's one of the things that I appreciated so much about what John Tinker and, and the team did this year and, and all praise to them. I, I, I can't take credit for these great storylines. I, I'm, I'm the best cheerleader in the world behind the scenes for them and give them my thoughts and my hopes and dreams. And, but they did such a great job, but to be able to, to make Hope Valley and When Calls the Heart all of a piece like they did, where the echoes from even early back in the show in season one and season two came back and reverberated in this season and some of those feelings and uh, came back this year. And uh, I loved the callbacks to the early years of the show. It, it makes it feel like it's all of, it's all one big, you know, ecosystem of storytelling. And there, there are a lot of different voices that speak into this show. We were the ones that got it going and, and got it created, but we've, we've handed the baton to some fine people over the years. And, and yet, it all seems to resonate and all seems to, to hang together. So I'm thrilled. I, I love this season so much. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure most of the Hardys did too this year. It was um, nice to finish off with, uh, you know, episode 12 uh, last night um, or two nights ago, I should say, with uh, a a celebration really of so many stories coming together and, and finding uh, such powerful resolution and, and, and passion and uh, the proposal and Rosemary and Lee and, you know, even, even Henry Gowan getting some good old fashioned Bible redemption um, that, that was deeply moving to me, all of those storylines. And it was a, it was definitely a four hanky, a four hanky episode for me. Yeah, I completely agree, Brian. And uh, like you said, um, you know, at the end of last season, a lot of Hardys had a lot of feelings. They felt all the feelings. But and also, you know, uh, this was a great season because James can attest. I would text him every week be like, the season's so good. <laughs> you know, this episode's so good. And and like this, this was a very happy season. And I felt like there were a lot of storylines going on, but I wasn't at all confused and so like going into season nine, at the end of season eight, you know, with everything that happened, but going into season nine, I just want to know, like, what, what was that conversation like? OK, it's like we have to add this. We have to take that out. We have to fix this. Or like, what was the, like your thought and storyline process like going into season nine? Well, you know, John and, and Michael and I always have a, a really long conversation before the writers start to work on the new season about, you know, what are the goals? What, what, what should we do more of? What should we do less of what, you know, what big arcs, you know, should we pay off and try to get resolved? And, you know, it's, it's an interesting process because that starts very early. So, you know, th this would have started way back in, in June of last, of last year. Uh, when we have those, you know, May and June of last year, when we have those conversations and, you know, we're a whole year later and the result of those conversations was, was deeply meaningful to me and, and powerful because so many of the things that we love to talk about and sort of dream about, you know, we saw come to fru fruition uh, in, in this season. You know, I think the, I think probably the biggest mission statement for season nine was what you just said, more happiness, right? Uh, that was truly one of the big things we wanted to get to. Now, you know, drama is fueled on conflict. You guys probably know this, right? <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Conflict <laughs> is the fuel of good drama. Well, yeah. conflict can sometimes cause anxiety for for the audience, right? And, you know, the Hallmark Channel has never wanted to go too deeply into the conflict because it, we don't want to cause, you know, anxiety for people. And yet there was lots of anxiety that took place in season eight. There was lots of anxiety that took place, honestly, in, in seasons five and six and seven as well, because of some of the issues that we had to deal with. And so, and some of those 
anxiety producers had nothing to do with the storytelling and everything to do with just real life kinds of decisions that had to be made. But, you know, we wanted more, a more, I think, more calm, more peace, more unity, you know, not just because of, you know, Team Nathan or Team Lucas and some of the division that we saw in the past, you know, certainly that was part of the story, but the whole culture is divided, right? And, you know, when, when people are saying Ted Lasso is the, is, is revolutionary television because it's the, it's radical kindness on TV. Um, it's a great show. I love Ted Lasso, but we've been doing this forever, right? We've been doing <laughs> friendly <laughs> television, we've been doing radical <laughs> kindness forever on this show. It's not like they invented it. You know, they get a lot of attention for that, but that's been sort of our MO the entire run of the show. So we wanted unity. We wanted to create unity. We wanted to create more opportunities for redemption and less opportunities for division. And um, I do think we found that in spades. You know, there are stories of, of characters who have had re relationships healed and figured out and reconciled. And, you know, uh, when, when the pain of life and the problems of life comes to the surface, you know, we've got to figure out a way to get those things resolved. And I think we did that, you know, in a beautiful way this season. Outside forces sure are trying to come in and do some things that, that you know, everybody's afraid of and makes people angry and makes people sad and, and full of, you know, PTSD almost the, 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 the revisiting of the, op of the mine disaster from season one, which was such a, such a, um, a huge sort of issue that we dealt with in season one comes back again in, in season nine and all those feels, all those feelings come back. Mm -hmm a lot of the characters and, and, and their ghosts, right. From nine years ago. Well, it's okay to invoke the ghosts as long as we can bring the angels back. And that's what, that's what hope Valley is best at is finding our best angels, right. When, when the ghosts of trauma, you know, revisit us. And I think we did that beautifully this year. I love that there was more faith this year, I think, than there has been in past years, you know, with, with Joseph and Minnie and the church and, and, um, you know, that's been a huge, to me, that's been one of the big wins of, of, of Hope Valley and When Calls the Heart is adding the Canfields to this, to this show. Uh, May Sue, adding May Sue and her character this year has been really fascinating really interesting way to dis diversify our town and to let it grow and be bigger and, and, and have more vibrancy. Um, you know, that, that's been a goal for a long time, honestly, that Michael and I, I always had was let's introduce some, you know, some more ethnic kinds of stories. We even found out that Ned Yost is Jewish, you know, yes. right. <laughs> yeah. I love that so much. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> To be able to do Passover this year, you know, um, we have we have some really lovely, passionate Hardys who, uh, you know, are Jewish, and they've always longed for, you know, some diversity in that way too, because uh, this is a pretty Protestant town that we live in here. Yes, in exactly. and just so so that, but but I love that we could sort of branch out and and be more have a bigger tent, you know. For people and that that to me has always been a goal and and i and everybody just you know did such a great job of that this year i yeah, felt I'm, like go ahead, go ahead, Marissa, go ahead Marissa. oh yeah I, I just have to quickly say like as an asian woman <laughs> thank you so much for bringing amanda wong onto the show we talked to her we loved her please yes. don't ever let may sue go <laughs> she <laughs> needs to stay she's amazing <laughs> So thank you on behalf of all the Asians. <laughs> yes. You know, we, we in, the, in the in past seasons, we've added, you know, people of color and people of different eth ethnic backgrounds into the background of the show. The background players are 
yep. you know, our, our community players. Um, but I always felt like, okay, well, that's, it's nice, but it's kind of not that, you know, not that fulfilling because we should tell stories about them, you know, and let them tell their stories. And so I, I love that part of, of adding Amanda and, and May Sue to this, this, the show this year. It felt really, really fulsome to me. Now my turn as a black person, African American, I know there is there's one scene that I talked about in one of my little reaction videos that you guys watched out there. And I talked to, we talked to the camp, we will touch the camp films. We talked to Viv Natasha earlier. And I talked to Pascal recently. Yes. Um, there's a scene that they did that I felt was so well done mm. uh, between Lee and Joseph, where certain words weren't said but they were said. And the scene that I still remember, the, the, I remember the line, I just, I, that's how strong it stuck with me. Yeah. Was when Joseph says to Lee, I, you know, I'm a man trying to provide for my family. You can understand that, but you can't understand the rest that goes along with it. Right. And he also says, you know, um, and I don't want you to have to carry that on you. And it was like, it just with that, just that, and then and Pascal actually on our show talked about, they actually talked about that scene, the three of them and the leader talked about the scene. There were so many scenes like that that you did showing a loving black couple, um, showing, showing they also have kid problems, you know, with Cooper and all these problems. Like it was, there were a lot of normalcy things you did with this couple. And if people, I mean, in the chat room, they love the Canfields. Like that's a complete hit out the park. Apparently they yes. love them. Yes. But you also did things that show us that there is, Stuff going on, obviously, at that time period that us us African Americans know what's going on today, new one on back there. But you actually kind of address it, but you do it in a way that still is really respectful and it's and it's still powerful. And I and I just I just will tell you myself, I really appreciate that. I, I did, and and so like with, with Marissa having this happen on screen for us who are black hardies or African, whatever you call yourselves at home, American hardies, whatever. It's good to, it's good to see this. It's good, everybody has different names, but it's good just for me, people of color hardies, it's good to see that. And I thought it was some really great scenes. I just want to tell you it was a really great scenes this season. Well, you might've come up with a new hashtag there, Blarties, maybe? Blarties, there you go. I was, I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's some out there, I know some. I know some out there, I know some out there, so yes. No, Blarties. thank you. Thank you, James. That's deeply moving to me to, to hear you say that. The, you know what I, you, you know, sometimes those kinds of storylines and trying to thread the needle becomes very bl black and white uh, right. and, and very paint by the numbers, you know, uh, on television. It's hard to find the nuance. And, you know, that subtext of, of the, those unspoken themes and issues is so powerful. Uh, you know, e even Lee wanting to be a good friend, but, but ha you know, essentially going around, you know, Joseph's back to guarantee his loan. You know, that is what we call in storytelling, you know, the great white savior complex, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. And I love that we went there, but mm -hmm. we addressed it too. Right. Uh, in the past, it wasn't addressed. It, it was just it was invoked, but never unpacked, you know, and I love that that, you know, Viv. Uh, and Kevin were able to unpack that in a few scenes and yet re still remain friends and colleagues and and have Lee learn a huge lesson from that. Right. It, and it's, again, it's, you know, what we've all sort of experienced in the culture in the last, um, you know, few years, um, you know, with all the, uh, you know, just, just all the volatility that we've experienced and, and the, the tragedies of, of, you know, George Floyd and, and what happened to him and, and um, just this sort of div division that we've experienced in our culture. And we absolutely need to be color blessed. I believe that so much and not just, you know, try to be colorblind like Martin Luther King advises us to do, 
but to be color blessed, to see the value of each other in our lives, in each other's lives, right? We all bring, we're all human beings. We're all a little bit broken, right? We all are vulnerable and we all need grace, right? We've heard a lot about critical race theory, but I don't think we've heard, and that's fine, you know, for us to hear about that and to learn about it. But we also need to hear about critical grace theory because we all need grace, right? We all need grace. And uh, no matter who we are, right, we all need it. And, and that's what we do in Hope Valley. And, you know, Joseph shows grace to Lee, right? He doesn't write him off. He doesn't, like, you know, walk away from him, but he shows him grace. He, 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 he gives some, some, you know, he speaks to the truth to him, right? He doesn't, he doesn't just let it lie and bury the feelings. He allows the feelings to come out and to share them. But then it comes with a big dose of grace. And, you know, as a man of the cloth and the man of the word of, of the Bible, you know, he knows what grace is about and that everybody deserves it. So, you know, that, that was, I think, just lovely and brilliant, you know, new interesting new ways to do stories this year, um, you know, with, with Canfields and, and their friends. Yeah, I completely agree. And I loved how you talked about earlier with the faith, you know, um, mixing in with the grace, because uh, through, I saw a lot of faith this season in, in like such a great way because, and spanning from different generations, because we also had Cooper questioning faith and all that and yes. we have this young yes. kid he's at that age where kids are questioning everything and that's right. like right. when they're making the decisions of what they should believe in why should they believe in and then flip side to the to the finale with gallon first finding faith so like and i loved how this season with this different storylines how faith just played in different levels um you know, new and old and questioning and like different ages. And I, I thought everyone, like the storyline were really well, um, you know, placed because I feel this true to everyone. Like we all have our different beliefs and systems of, and how we think faith or how we find faith. And I think that was, it was really well done this season. I have yeah. to pay back, I want to pay you back really quick, uh, Marissa, because Marissa, everybody, everybody want me to ask Marissa, now, how she feel about Henry? This is a long <laughs> one joke. Everything a long. I knew Marissa. this was coming. I yes, knew I'm, I'm sorry, this Brian. Everybody wants to know because Marissa for all these years. But before you say something, Marissa, I just want to say that for me, I yes. I wept. I wept at that scene when Joseph he knelt down at the Bible and I started. I just I just yeah. couldn't stop crying. I thought it was completely oh. this beautiful scene. Um, and Henry, his his storyline arc, I mean, from where he came, whence he came to now, um, I think it's been beautifully done, actually. I think it's been very interesting. I mean, like all these seasons, Henry is probably one of the most changed. Or, I mean, besides like Rosemary's another one, too. I kind of feel like her, too. But I feel like Henry really has come a long way. So, Marissa, I just going to tell people how you about Henry <laughs> these days. Everybody wants to know. Uh, I'm sitting in the chat room too. I want to know how you feel about Henry Gowan these days. Uh, <laughs> would you want me to answer it now? I was like, it'll let Brian speak. Yes. Um, Everybody's I asking. <laughs> we, we up, so I want to talk about I love hearing what you guys are saying. It's, it's beautiful. Well, I do think, I mean, we've seen over all the years, like Henry finally get into the point where he knows he did wrongdoings and he had slowly made his reparations. Like here and there, still with his shady ways of going about it in his executions granted not the greatest ways to go about it um but and, and even this season blown up mine you know like also very questionable but i do have to say this season the difference with this season is that all of his actions actually i felt like we're truly wrapping up fully re reparations like it, the past season he did little things here and there with maybe like uh, make amends with one person individually like they were very isolated events but this one like blowing up the mind kind of wraps up the whole picture and everything yes. that he has done in, in the past um so i think like his actions now had bigger um i can't think of the word but like bigger results at the end of it better results 
Yes. And I mean, we even had Florence at the end, you know, because of the previous episode, she slapped him only, I mean, rightfully so. But to even have Florence, who is one of the people who is, you know, affected by this, she lost her husband and she was just, her and Molly, I think are like really the only people in, that are still in the town who yeah. were actually affected. Yeah. And for even her to come around and finally seemingly forgive Henry for this, I mean, he has made made serious movements and and moves it in this season where it truly felt like it was deserved on his end. Yeah, you know the the um, the redemption story of Henry Gowan to me is is you know one of the things that I always feel is I mean it's one of the best things about the show. Um, you know, redemption is always available to all, all of us and it's sitting there waiting for us, but we have to, for one, make amends, like you say, reparations. We have to acknowledge our wrongs, uh, but we also have to accept it and forgive ourselves in order to embrace full re re redemption. And we see, we saw that happen with him. Right. He even gave a big anonymous gift to the church. Right. Because he just feels like he has to find a way to earn the redemption. And what Joseph says to him and what re re Joseph represents to him when he comes to that very moving jailhouse scene with it and hands him the Bible is. Believe plus receive equals become. And I think that's what happened there, right? And when Henry says to him, can you teach me how to pray? I, you know, you have to be a really cynical person in this world to not be deeply moved by that moment. You know, a man who truly wants to repent, who truly wants to understand forgiveness, right, for himself and all those people in this town who have forgiven him. It's Florence who whispers in his ear, I forgive you. <laughs> you know, that, where, do you, where else are you going to see that on TV? Not right? Nowhere. And, yeah. but it's absolutely that lesson uh, that we saw there. I believe personally, now others can disagree with me, but I'm, but I believe I'm right about this. Um, it's absolutely the cure for everything. It's the cure for everything. Impossible forgiveness is what the world needs in, in spades because it, it's the cause of most chaos and anxiety and, and pain and agony and hostility is unforgiveness. It takes two people to do it, though, right? It needs someone to say, please forgive me. And it needs the other person to say, I do forgive you, right? Or it can't happen. And um, holding on to bitterness, in, and I believe this, too, is like drinking poison and hoping it makes the other person sick. And we don't, we just will never do that in Hope Valley. We're never going to live that way. This is going to be a place of second chances always. And, uh, and I love that we just are bold about it. And, you know, people can think it's, you know, schmaltzy or whatever they want. I don't care. This show is a healing agent in the culture, in my opinion. And I think that's why so many people watch it, you know, to be the top scripted program on Sunday nights on cable TV in the last two or three seasons, that's happened every Sunday night. Once we started to beat the zombies, uh, we never looked back. And yes, it's a great show, but, but what I'm saying is, is it still going? <laughs> it's, it's still going. It's still going. 
the sequel is on is still going but yeah. but uh, but it's not again it's not because it's not i think we're doing good work and i think we're, we're doing the right work on the show but it's not because of us it's that the audience is starved to death for this and when you give people food they will just love you they'll be so loyal to you right and that's why the audience keeps coming back every Sunday night. Shows this deep into the, their lifespan can get old, can get, you know, long in the tooth. And we're not yet. <laughs> I mean, I really don't believe we've even peaked yet with this show in season nine. And I, I do, you know, we will be around for a long time, I believe. Whether or not, you know, the Hallmark Channel wants to keep us around forever, it doesn't matter. There will be somebody else who wants it because it is so unique. And we will, we will keep making the show as long as those Hardys want to show up and watch the show. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, 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 it's yeah, it's one well, of the things, I, I want to give a couple of shout outs to um, Loretta Young Mm. Um, as you had a new march, uh, they had a couple of scenes this season that were very powerful. You may you guys both mentioned a couple of scenes that Loretta did as Florence that were so like, we were like, wow, maybe reminding us of the mine, a yeah. reminding us of disaster. Um, some powerful work, and then Joanna had a quiet scene in the infirmary with Faith, just saying she missed having somebody. Yeah, and I just thought that yeah. it was such. It wasn't like this huge thing. It was just a quiet scene that many of us feel. Some of us who are single, we feel that way, and it just was a quiet and. It was just. And Bill said something. He mentioned Nora uh, and how she has to take care of her. I, I like those touches of the past. Yes. Kind of being in the present and those actors just delivering those lines. That's some, Absolutely. Good, that's some good stuff. That, that yeah. was that was good. Um 100%. this I'm sorry, okay. okay. And I, I'm having weird, I'm having weird issues, of course, a little bit on the internet. Of course, that's how it works, folks, in Zoom. That's what happens on the internet. It happens. Um, I want to do it. But I want, if you guys can hear me, I want to ask you, Brian. It felt like this season was very town heavy. It felt like even in the background. You saw the expansion. It felt like everything, this town was really growing and growing. Yeah. And it, I really felt that energy this season. Yeah, I, I love that part too. There were even traffic jams in Hope Valley, which, yeah. <laughs> which I love. I thought that was so fun. Yes. Right? <laughs> All the cars. We have, we have Nathan out there directing traffic, right? Because there's so, too many cars and the <laughs> yeah. pedestrians and you know, people are used to be able to walk anywhere they want. And now they're having to look out because the cars are driving by. <laughs> no, I, I, I love that. You know, we're watching, you know, Hope Valley sort of evolve with the chronology of the period, you know, and, and that was really fun. It was fun to, to, you know, um, uh, to, to get the, the, the motor pool filled up, uh, you know, on, in the production with all these cool old cars and, 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 you know, to, to make it feel alive and full. And, and then, you know, you just add stories like, hey, we're going to build a foundry. Well, foundry needs coal in order to make steel, right? So it, it brought all this rich nuance. And, and there's, you know, and there's these vultures trying to come in and buy properties up and, and uh, you know, and with their Pinkerton guards and, you know, just it, it did feel like the world now has discovered Hope Valley, yes. right? The outside world. And, hey, we want in on this. And, you know, we all are very selfish about wanting to give up Hope Valley to the world. And so, you know, those citizens, they love their town and they're and they're not just going to, you know, let somebody tread on them and walk in and take over things. Yeah, no. I, I like that you have the horse and buggy are gone, but now you have a cute little station for when they cut, when the, the thing comes, it's like, and they, were, they have an attendant. I saw a background actor. He's an attendant. He had a, a clipboard. Yep. I saw him. Yep. Yep. No, it's just, uh, it does feel, you know, uh, 
more full, you know, as a town. And I, and I love that. I, I really do. You know, and I, I think it also is a, uh, you know, evidence of we're not fully out of the pandemic yet. When that show was shot, we were still, you know, having to be very, very cautious and go, go with all the protocols to keep people safe. But it was a little more relaxed than it was the previous year. And, um, and I think it's, you could see it, right? I do think we were sort of in season eight, we were sort of really isolated in the show. We felt, you know, it felt to me like, okay, well, you know, this, this is the pandemic showing how you can't have big crowd scenes and even people showing up to a wedding, you know, it's pretty sparsely populated. And now I think we're able to open that up a little more. And I, you know, Lord willing, if there's a season 10, we're going to be able to do that even more. And uh, in terms of all the background and, and uh, ba- background players in our community, you know, keeping it vibrant and robust and, you know, full of life. Yes. Yeah. We I definitely the- saw this. Oh, yeah. I definitely saw this, the difference between this season and the previous season where the scenes were more full with more people, more background actors, just actors in general, and no. also re- utilizing the school slash church more this season. And yes. this, the finale, we had, I was going to call them Viv and Natasha, we had the Canfields <laughs> having their picnic. I was like, oh, yeah, that is, that is not just a school. <laughs> that is a church church that is a place that <laughs> joseph has access to as well i was like we should use it more um but again the the world pandemic world that we live well, in uh, i understand the the limitations but multi, i think you, multi-use facility there the church <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly but i i think you and production you know uh, as a production person myself i i just yeah. hats off to you guys for still making it look like we're in a very idealistic type of you know, community there. Yeah. And I, you know, you said something earlier, Marissa, about even just the Cooper, you know, sort of the Cooper Canfield arc with his dad and, and his mom there, yeah. a young man asking questions and trying to figure out his own life. And, you know, it, it dovetails with that comment dovetails with even what we're talking about right now, because, you know, our, our, our job in making the show is to make it as relatable to the audience as we can. Right now it's set yeah. in 1920. So how are we going to make it relatable to, you know, 1920 relate, re, re, relatable 102 years later, right? How do you do that? Well, for one, you know, some of those, those production elements that got enhanced in season nine, you know, that that's familiar territory. We're all familiar, you know, with traffic jams and like, whoa, watch, don't step off the curb, you know, a car's coming by. We're all familiar with that. Well, it, it's, we, it is our life now, right? So we need for the, the, the common universal experiences of our life now to show up in Hope Valley. Well, it's hard to do that a hundred years ago, right? To, to depict exactly what those feelings are. But, you know, every family goes through what the Canfields are going through with, with Cooper, right? Every family does, right? No matter what faith or non-faith you come from, kids are, are you know, it's a generational thing. We all, you know, try to, try to push our parents as much as we can. We don't, we, wanna, we want to establish our own identity in the world. We want to understand the world, you know, ourselves. We don't want to just be dictated to or, or, or you know, we, we can't, we honestly, no one can inherit their faith from their parents. You have to embrace it yourself or, or figure out how you're going to live. And every family goes through that. That's a really universal thing that is happening in Hope Valley, but is also happening right now. There's a huge you know, in the Gen Z population and, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the millennial population, there's a huge uh, push away from the faith of the fathers. It, it's been going on for a long time. So the fact that we can, we can echo that story in Hope Valley a hundred years ago, 
means that families going through stuff like that can learn something from it and or or can at least feel like oh somebody understands me right what i'm going through and and so you know i love it when we can do that when we can make you know those themes of life those experiences of, of life feel universal to a modern audience that's what keeps them wanting to come back because even if you have to go through an experience like that, you know, in a, in a show, a show like this also can figure out a way to, to reconcile it or to, to come to some sort of satisfying resolve about that. And people want that in their lives too. Now we want resolve. We want redemption. We want reconciliation in our lives. Nobody wants to walk around through life, knowing somebody's got a beef against them, right? Or vice versa, living with some beef that we have against somebody, that, that's just, that's poison. That's like having a tumor that needs to be taken out, in my opinion. Right. I, I love how you wrote the Canfields and how, um, you know, the, the parents, how they were going about it. Um, they're like, let Cooper take some time, let him figure it out, because as a Catholic, I, I was raised definitely Catholic, um, definitely strict in that way. Like at Cooper's age, when I was Cooper's age, I was already an altar server. I, I felt like I didn't really have a choice. So I loved how you gave the Canfields the, the ability to give Cooper the choice to like let him take the time to think and figure it out for himself. And yeah. he'll come back when he's ready. Yeah, I, I love have- that because I didn't have that freedom. Right, right. And, you know, it, different, you know, different cultures, you know, have, have, you know, go through challenges of figuring out how to process those kinds of those divides or those, those sense, you know, those, the, that conflict. Look, I, I'm, I, I make no bones. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I've been, I was raised in the church. My grandfather was a pastor. My father was a pastor for a while. I was raised in the church. I had to find it for myself though in college, I had to figure out what I believed in college. And I asked a lot of hard questions and it, it brought me back to what I believe is truth because I had a, a journalism professor in college because I went to journalism school. And I said, how, how am I supposed, I'm supposed to ask questions as a journalist. How am I supposed to just sort of embrace what I've always been told, you know, by my parents. And he said this to me, he said, in the marketplace of ideas, you don't have to fear any of it because truth will always rise to the top in the marketplace of ideas. So don't be afraid of the marketplace of ideas. Just live in it because truth will always come, come back around. And I have, I have discovered that for myself, but I have five kids, right? They all have sort of a different way of looking at the world. And the way I've found peace with, with that is, through my own prayer life, I say, God, you, you put on their hearts what you want for them to, to feel. Don't, I'm not going to be responsible for that. I've tried to raise them in the best way possible with a sense of right and wrong in the world. You raise them. I mean, you convict them. You put on their hearts what you want them to have and what you want them to feel. And I'm okay with that. Wherever, however that ends up, I will love on them no matter what, right? And even if I disagree with them, I'm going to love on them. And they disagree with me. I hope they reciprocate because I love to be lo- loved by my kids. Uh, and that's what the Canfields are doing with Cooper right there. They're saying, it'll be okay. We, ha- we have to let them ask questions. And honestly, I don't know if, it, if you've checked, but the Bible is full of really big questions and I'm characters who, yeah, characters yes. who ask really hard questions about uh, God, yes. and, right? Uh, and yes. All the doubt that they have and the existential crisis that people go through. We all go through this. Yes. We all go through it. Yeah. Um, so I was, I want to say, you know, uh, we have, we have to talk about it because you know, we have to, the big three. Um <laughs> But we'll get to them in a second. I was like, a little teaser, folks. We'll get to them in a second. I want to talk about my girl, Rosemary and Lee, because I just love, that's my favorite character, of course. Everybody, everybody knows it already. Yeah. 
My crush on Pascal, Pascal goes <laughs> beyond words. Yeah. She knows already too. Marissa nobody knows. That's my that's my that's my cut. Even though I I miss my Jesse and Clara, I'll just say it. I do miss them. I do miss them. <laughs> uh, I will say I do miss them. I will say that. Yeah. That's my other favorite couple. I do miss them. Yes. But back to Rosemary and Lee. Um, I think it's so wonderful. You gave us a gift. She's preggers. I'm so happy because we laugh. My interviewed her, I go, wait a minute, what see what episode you're you think you're pregnant? Next episode, you may not be pregnant. Are you gonna be a boy crazy? And the finale. And the way that Lee responded was like so in character. The way she, I mean, Rosemary, of course, has gone through a huge storyline arc too. I mean, from season two, but like she's come a long way also running the, the Valley uh, Voice, all this, I mean, all this stuff, but you gave us a baby is coming. So I just want to tell you, I'm personally happy about that. <laughs> yes, me too. Uh, it, it obviously, you know, when you set up a, a, a storyline about infertility, you know, you have to pay it off somehow. And we yes. knew that, you know, ultimately we had to get there. Now, you know, there was some thought about, well, maybe they adopt, right? The, so we played with that right. a little bit, right? right. And that, that I was hoping for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to Brookfield I'm, and adopt. <laughs> yes, exactly. I know. I know, adopt all the kids. <laughs> yes. We, we have strong feelings about adoption, Marissa, you, you and me yes, both. And, uh, so the, that was, you know, that was a possibility and that would have been very, you know, heartwarming kind of story to tell, you know, we have the sort of in the, the, the when calls the heart storytelling universe that we have uh, that includes Brookfield over there. And, you yes. know, when hope calls there's that orphanage there and the, the yes. and Lee and Lee and past, you know, Lee and uh, Rosemary visited there once. So there, you know, that was a possibility, but, you know, one of the things about Pascal is that she's such a great mama in real life that, boy, did you see mama show up, <laughs> right? R real mama and those eyes and that consternation that she had as she's going through the process of hoping, praying that it could be true, but, not, but being, having been disappointed so much in the past. And you saw her go th cycle through all of that as, an, as a human being, Pascal playing a fictional character, you know, Rosemary, had all the feels there, all the emotions that she went through. And that to me was just so one of the, one of the great arcs of the season was that arc, right? Because, you know, she got to play a lot of, lot of, lot of flavors there uh, yeah, yeah. with that. And, and then, you know, Lee run out in his pajamas screaming to the world. I'm going to be a father. Oh, that's the best thing ever. Yes. You know, that, that was so awesome. She's got to throw his slippers out the window to him. Yes. You know, <laughs> it's just, it was just fantastic. Uh, just, you know, such a vic victorious way to finish season nine with, with Lee and his excitement, Lee and Rosemary and their excitement over their news and Elizabeth and Lucas with the, and little Jack with their news and even Henry right with his news of, of feeling a new sense of self-worth and forgiveness of, of himself there. And, you know, uh, it, it was just, you know, for a final episode for a season, that's just gangbusters to me. Yeah. No, when, when, now I want to say what, what, this, the line that also got me for that when Rosemary talks to Elizabeth and yeah. says, Lee and I have gotten, we actually came to the, the point where we're used to, we were, are used to not having a child. Like yeah. we came that we were enough and that we were going to, you know, have our lives, enjoy, and even enjoy our lives. I thought that was a great thing to preface them, then her now yes. possibly being pregnant. I thought it was like, they, they showed us that they actually, they were very, they're very in love. You know, Lee and Rosemary are very much in love. So yes. they just kind of showed us that they, they discussed it. They were actually working on their lives without a natural baby. Yes. So this is actually icing you know, on the cake, so to speak. You know, it's a kind of a topper. Yeah. Um, but you also mentioned, now, I, before we get to the Lucas and Elizabeth, yeah. you've kind of made this thing where, and I actually am enjoying it, the Lucas Nathan 
Oh, bro. Friendies, friendship. <laughs> and then Nathan Elizabeth kind of falling into this kind of jokey, jokey. So I was curious about that. Yes. That's very, we, we, we got the engagement at the end. I was all cute and everything. But I'm kind of curious this whole season after. Different you know, dynamic. Different dynamic. Thank you different much. dynamic between everybody this season. Yeah. Yeah. In a good way. In a, in a very you. good, healthier way. <laughs> very, very healthy. And, and um, you know, self-effacing and. Uh, the elephant, you know, is already been, you know, is the elephant's in the room already. So we might as well just <laughs> make peace with it. Right. Um, I love that. I, and I love even, you know, Nathan being able to be a big enough man to go, you know, you better be careful. You're going to lose him like you lost me. And I just go, dude, uh, you know, I remember okay. when I, I remember when a girl broke up with me in high school and I, and I was listening to the Eagles song, I'm already gone. Right. In my, in my car saying, yeah, I'm already gone. I was already there. You know, it's what Lucas is doing, right. He's already gone. And I love that because he, now he can move on and he can, he can almost throw it back in her face. You know, he's the wounded guy from last year. He was a big, you know, sad sack at the end of the season. And, you know, what, what am I going to do? You know, I've been rejected, but now he goes, I still got it. Mm-hmm. Right. I still they got see. it. There, they there's see. actually two. They see. I they see. They see. They see. There's two women checking me out in this town. I still got it. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, I love okay. <laughs> doing that for Nathan because he had a really full season. It's not like, you know, he's third wheel to the, to, to Lucas and Elizabeth anymore. Oh. Uh, and, and, you know, he, he's got some victory out of this whole thing. And I think for the team, Nathan fans, you know, the ones who stuck around or secretly watched, I hope they, I hope they um, got, took some great joy for themselves out of that because he does have a future. He's got a big future on the show. He's the man in this town. Right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so. and, yeah. you know, they're you know, he's the most eligible bachelor in this town now. So yeah, yeah. to me, that's a really powerful thing. I mean, Hickam is maybe, you know, second, but it's kind of a distant second <laughs> at this point. So, <laughs> But him and Lucas, are, they're having this fun banter. I mean, I'm going to get him at the when he went to go rest, go, go see what he's doing up there in the woods. And- yes. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was, I thought I'm like, I never thought I'd see that. I never thought I'd enjoy it, but I was like, I like this. So they're kind of becoming, they're understanding each other. They like, they're yeah, understand. they're, yeah, they're, they're, it's sort of this, uh, this, you know, um, uh, I don't know what the term is just this, uh, you know, cautious uh, alliance, yes. you know, that's forming yeah. and, you know, some hardies call it a bromance, which is fine. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of bromance. Yeah, yeah. I'll just say that a bromance, <laughs> romantical. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're they're at the point where they can finally be civil again to each other, and it's, and it doesn't always have to include, you know, Elizabeth in it. Because when Nathan went up into the mountains, he was giving Lucas a hard time, like, "Hey, your tent is." facing the wrong yes. the wrong direction you know all that so it's like i, I think they're, they're finally at the point where they can just be men and yes. have those and, manly uh, conversations yes. yeah and and uh dude you got any coffee right uh exactly you know, I, I don't drink coffee it's like so we have to have tea really that's hilarious um, yeah camp, <laughs> i just loved all that and you know even 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 getting to see you know lucas chop some wood with his tiny little you know hatchet um <laughs> was fun um yeah. you know because that's been a big deal in hope valley is men chopping wood you know it's yes sort of, it has yeah yes. <laughs> it has you just can't do yeah. it <laughs> and, and, and uh and the and the and the girls walking by you know the men chopping yes. wood you know yeah. it's always been a thing in hope valley and you know it was fun to it's fun to play with that just a little to see to see lucas out of his element you know, he's not Mr. GQ smooth up in the mountains there. He's got to, he's got to be a boy scout and figure out how to survive out there. So that was kind of fun. So we got, we got the, the, the big couple. They went through a really nice, actually a cool season. Lucas went through his own emotional stuff that had nothing to do with Elizabeth. Basically it had to do with other stuff that was going on in his life. And part of his past 
coming up a little bit. Yep. Um, and so talk about was there was there a conscious decision like, okay, we're gonna calm things down a little bit this season and just have them be together. And it, so a lot of kissing this season, I'll tell you that. A lot of kissing and they're together. Maybe Jack was incorporated. Well, actually, toddler Jack was incorporated a lot more in it. Yep. Um, and, and he was, of course, part of the, the thing. So talk about that. Talk about what the, the general thought was for season nine for well, them. You know, you know, part of part of the catharsis of season eight was the decision, obviously, uh, for for Liz Elizabeth to sort of have to finally decide which man she wanted to court, you know and the end of the love triangle. And so, you know, one of the goals this year was we can't milk that ever again, <laughs> right? The love triangle. <laughs> that doesn't mean we can't have them address the issues that they're, as they're sort of figuring out their lives. But, you know, we had to make it a very clear, we're not going back on this, 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 because to be honest, we believe it was the right decision. No matter what some of the Hardys feel, it's okay to agree to disagree as long as we're not disagreeable. Um, this this was a great decision. We, as I said, probably to you last last year too when we did this show. You know, we did five years of teacher Mounty, right? Five seasons of that, and our goal as storytellers always. And, and you guys know this as well as anybody is to not be predictable, yeah. right? Not to repeat storylines and just, right. you know, it's really hard to do as a show gets, gets older because you've, you've covered so much territory. How do you keep it fresh? Well, Lucas and Elizabeth is fresh. It's something nobody expected. It's not in the books, right? The books uh, that Jeanette Oak wrote were always right. about a Mountie and a teacher. Well, we have sort of, you know, once you get to almost 100 episodes, it's kind of hard to go back to the original, you know, uh, book material because you've sort of, you've gone through many, many, many of the storylines and Hope Valley has a life of its own. It's a world of its own. And so it has to have its own, you know, we have to be able to develop it in its own way. So it was the right decision. So we believe and we still believe that 100%. So now we got a new season nine to, 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 to explore that decision and make it real, make it stick, but also to show more flavors of Lucas than Mr. GQ smooth, who owns the salon and, you know, has a, a safe with money in it. You know, that's, that's a pretty one dimensional character. Um, we want to show a lot of flavors, a lot of colors there for, you know, for Chris to play. And, and boy, did we, right. You know, figuring out how to make him a potential father, right. This guy's, this guy's never been around a little kid, right. In his life. Uh, we had to figure out a way to show that in action and, and make us fall in love with Lucas as a potential father, because he can't marry her unless he can show that right so that was just one one aspect of it but you know showing him sort of having regrets about you know his business life and having maybe made some poor decisions in the past that he's trying to overcome you know none of these characters is perfect and flawless they're real people you know we try to make fictional characters resonate as real human beings with all of the stuff on all the, you know, the contradictions that we all feel sometimes. Uh, we all we all do things that we know we shouldn't. We say things we know we shouldn't. We don't say things that we know we should, right? And then we kick ourselves later for all of that. We all do this, right? So we, we wanted to demonstrate that, but we also wanted to show a side of Lucas where he could mix it up with the bad dude, bad boys, right? He could he could go toe to toe with the big uh, you know guy that looks like the Rock coming in you know as a Pinkerton guard yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know that he could stand toe to toe with with all those people too and not be and be fearless about it because that's what 
that's what Nathan represents as well in the town. The guy's fearless. He gets shot at. He he, yeah. he gets in an accident. You know, car runs into him you know, on his horse, and you know it, the guy is fearless. And so we wanted to we wanted to show that Lucas could also have some of those characteristics, because you know every woman wants a man who's self directed. You know who who who's not afraid of life, who who doesn't you know, turn and run from a challenge, you know, and men want the same out of their women. And, and we already got that. <laughs> Hope Valley's full of those women. I mean, it's, it's the most empowering <laughs> place in the world, which I think is also one of the other reasons why the fans love it so much is that it's, it's aspirational for them too. They want to feel like they have, you know, some choices and some, and some, you know, power in their lives. So I, so I, we want to be respect, respectful of your time. We have 160 people watching right now. We've been on for an hour. Yeah. Um, we, we totally appreciate you being here. But I, I just want to mention three things. Yep. Um, just want to get out there to you. One, Cousin Gustav, we love him. <laughs> love him. But he goes, you know I speak French, right? And he's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> that line. Um, <laughs> the scene that made me totally sob also was Bill giving the will mm. to Elizabeth. Now yes. we're talking nine seasons, friendship, everything they've been through, to, you know, like together, separately, nothing together. Yep. I'm assuming he has TB. That's what my, my nurse's skills are saying. That's probably what it is. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah, I, I wrote like, down in my notes, is either T tuberculosis or Hodgkin's. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. I think I was I, like, I, those are the only ones I could think of. <laughs> I, I'm a former nurse, so I was like, that sounds like the, we, all the, the symptoms. Um, that one mentioned that just that scene was just that whole thing was beautiful, and he calls him Mountie Jack, the little Jack. I love I love that whole thing. Um, and then Hickam is mayor. What were you guys eating that suddenly Hickam is mayor? But then <laughs> yes. his storyline arc. That? <laughs> and then his storyline arc was that he decides to step down. So I just I so I want to mention those three things. You can comment on all any one, two, three, whatever. You know, was heard. Yeah, I mean I thank you. Uh, couldn't agree with you more about, you know, Bill and, and, and his last will and Testament wanting to at least put it in somebody's hands in case something happens to him. Right. You know, part of this was, we, we hope that everybody sees that there's unfinished business in Hope Valley and we didn't tie up everything in this episode. Right. Because we have no intention of riding off into the sunset ourselves with this show. So we, we will never end the show unless we decide we're going to end the show. Right. We, we will always have either cliffhangers or unresolved storylines that need to be fixed. So whatever it is that Bill has, you know, you guys are great, great guessers. <laughs> Only one of those two things is really treatable in 1920. Yeah. Uh, so I won't say any more than that. But yeah, I, know. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know, yes. <laughs> but the um, but that's an unfinished storyline, right? And we we needed to leave some things unfinished. What's going to happen to Henry? Okay, he's got he's got redemption now, but he's still sitting behind bars, right? That's an unfinished storyline. Something's going to happen there. So we we so that's that's a long way to answer your question, but I, I did want to slip that in is that we don't, we don't see the end of this show. I don't know when season 10 or if season 10 will be announced a hundred percent, but all I'm saying is that we still feel like we're going to go forward. So, okay. and we will, no matter what I can say that. So folks, you hear that in chat room. Or anybody hear yes, spoken? A, okay, he has spoken. Anybody hear that in chat room? So we're like, there's no official announcement yet from Hallmark, but he said the show, there's a lot of places the show can go. I mean, trust me, the show can continue. So many. Yes. <laughs> trust yes. me. Trust we know, me. We know that and we 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 believe that. And we're we we uh we haven't decided that it's over yet. And we get to decide. So uh that in my opinion. So uh, I, I'll leave it at that. Um, so uh, yes, so fantastic scene. Uh, saw a little side of, he loves that little boy too. He does, yeah, he does. Right? Yeah, Highland 
so cute. Oh, Highland's the best. He's the best. Yeah. Buddy. Buddy. Buddy, and, buddy. We, and we love those twins, but, you know, they just, they wanted, they, you know, they, they were not as fun, ha having as much fun as they should have on a show. And, you know, they're going through a time in their lives where it just wasn't fun for them anymore. And so it was hard. It was hard on everybody. And we love them to death. And they will always be in our hearts as the first yeah. little Jack. Um, but Highland is unbelievable. Uh, that, that, that kid, I want, I want him when we're done with him. I want him to come to my house if his parents will let, let me. Um, but uh, yeah, and so um, remind me of the other, the other two. So, so, so I said Bill, cousin Gustav, where did oh, he come cousin, from? Yeah. I love him. Everybody loves him. Like, where did he come from? Yeah. Well, you know, well, he got a bigger storyline this season. The town, <laughs> I mean, but you know what I mean? Like he became this, people started really talking about him kind of like, we yeah. like him as an interaction. Right. Yeah. You know, you always sort of need uh, fresh Urkels in your town. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and I, I used to do a show with, with Cody. Oh my God. Step by step. He was our Urkel on step by yeah, step. Step by step. Step by step. Yeah. Everybody yeah. needs a Cody. Everybody needs an Urkel. So that's hilarious. You know, you need the sidekick character. You need the, the comedic relief person. And, you know, they've sort of rotated in and out of that. You know, R Rosemary was that at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and now she became sort of a fixture, you know, in the town, like we couldn't go without her. Nobody would want Hope Valley without her. And no. she was the despised woman with the red dress at the beginning. Yes, so, that crazy, uh, yes. Was. So, so uh, Hickam has been that from time to time. Mm -hmm. Ned has been that from time to time, but now Ned's, you know, he got married now. So, and Florence has been that from time to time. She's married now too, and she's got a responsible. She's helped running, you know. She's she's married into money now. They run two yeah. businesses and the phone company. So you know this is a this is a big time uh, entrepreneur here. So they've rotated out of the comedic relief. So Gustav, you know, he's great. He's fantastic, and he can come along just because he's sort of got that snooty attitude about stuff, which is great right he, he it's like well you could say whatever you want but i'm going to do what i want and <laughs> that i love that about him and um and so gustav and 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 bill and what was the third one no, I mean, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was the mayor hickam oh hickam yeah so mike hickam <laughs> as mayor yeah we we that was you know mr a smith goes to washington was it was a shock but it was great because it because again unpredictability is what you know, the goal is, you know, everybody thinks they know what's going to happen on this show. And sometimes they're right, right? Sometimes they predict it. Sometimes we, we know what they think we're going to do. And so we'll take them on a slightly different route to get there, right? Just to, to keep it fresh and interesting. Uh, but with Hickam, it was Mr. Smith goes to Washington, right? Uh, it's just yeah. nobody expects him. <laughs> totally. <laughs> we didn't i i he texted did. james i was like um hickam's the mayor <laughs> i was like what yeah. yeah sometimes though when you have uh you have a spoiler candidate like that you know everybody is you know they can they can they can actually split the vote so much that all you need is one one more vote in a small town like this and right. you're the guy so oh, I know, you know, it's tricky. Right. It's, 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 it's so it's so funny and apropos because I, I work for the city and, oh, yeah. and it, it is currently election season. I was like, I know how all that goes. <laughs> it, like it, it, it could be like the difference of five votes. And that's all it takes. That's all yes. it takes. It is. It, but it's, it's hilarious. I, I thought it was just like and, so, and seeing Bill mentor him and try to help him out. And Lee not liking it at first. I mean, it was a, it was a great, it was a good, it was good. Don't, you mind a lot of stuff out of it. It was good. It was, it was very, very good. Um, yep. Appreciate yep. That. Always have to, you know, always have to find new, fresh little wrinkles to, to create, you know, some storylines and it's, you know, it's, it, it becomes more challenging the longer you go, but uh, you know, we're so thrilled with how it all came together this year. And we, 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 we feel like, you know, it was, it was so refreshing to talk to our admins today 
and yesterday after the finale that there wasn't this sense of, oh, the other shoe's about to drop, you know, on us because we have all this anxiety out there in the fan, you know, uh, the, you know, the fan community. And I felt that way too. It was like, ah, I can just relax. Now this was a lovely way to finish season nine. And I think, you know, it's the rare, it's the rare Hardy who's not that happy, you know, with how this all ended up. Well, Brian, thank you so much for taking your time. As always, every season, we have to continue to do this for every, no matter where the show is. And if it's on yes. Hallmark, anyway, you're, you're on Until show. we're giving our will and testament. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> that. Exactly. exactly. Well, um, as long as I'm I'm healthy and good, I will uh, I will p- pledge to do this with you every every year. And let's 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 uh, let's try to hit uh, the Simpsons, you know, catch up with the Simpsons. I would love that. <laughs> there you go. There he is. 30 years from now. I mean, Brian, you're That's not being a good record. Brian, you and I are a little older than Marissa. I don't know how yes. we're going to look, but... Um... <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> hey, my, my, the first show that I was on was in 1989-90 season. It was a, it was a show on, on Family Man, I mean, called The Family Man on CBS with Greg Harrison and Al Molinaro. Oh, wow. And uh, I was a, a, a story editor on that show, 1990 season. And The Simpsons was already uh, a couple years old at that point on Fox. And yep. that's, that's start. That's when my career really started was that year. Right. So, and I've been doing this 30 years. So <laughs> plus 30 plus years now. So um, it, it's, it's, it's crazy, but uh, you know, Gunsmoke used to be the, 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 you know, Walk the one that beat, but now it's the Simpsons. So I don't know if we so can. What hit. I'm hearing is that we need to switch to animation. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, and yes, the saloons on was on fire. I guess we'll have to wait and find out what happens there. Um, but yes, but Brian, thank you once again, as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, blessings um, to you guys. It's always a pleasure. I love talking thank to you. So much for, you know, your, just your, your passion for the show and your passion for the Hardys. And, you know, you guys are, you guys are so important to the community. Everybody loves you. And, uh, and more power to all the great work that you're doing right now. Thank you very much. Thank you for saying that. And Marissa, it's been good. It's good to see you again. with me again. Bye, <laughs> I'm here. still alive, everyone. Still here, yes, folks. I'm still, she's here. still here. She's beautiful. She's still here. We're friends off camera. We see each other. So you, she's here. Yeah, I, I just um, saw you last week. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So where she's here, folks. She's still a hearty. She's here. Um, yes. And again, as we see. The next season, whatever happens, we will be around. And we'll just stay tuned. Follow us. Follow them. Follow When Calls Heart, the accounts, um, the pages. You'll get all your information from there going forward, what's going to happen next. So just stay tuned to all of us. If you don't hear from them, you'll hear from us. And some of you will hear from somebody. Um, but I want to thank the 100 and like 160 some people in this chat room. Thank you for being respectful in the chat room, being wonderful and sharing ideas. And they all love you, Brian. They love the season overwhelmingly in the chat room. Mm-hmm. They're all in for season 10. They love season nine. Nice. Um, they appreciate it. So thank you guys in the chat room. Also. Thank you guys. God, 